Welcome back to my channel. So behind me here is a generator that I recently purchased. I really wanted a Honda U2200, but for as infrequently as I use a small generator, I decided to save a little bit of money and try a different model. So this is a Pulsar. This is a 2300 watt, and it's 1800 watt rated power output. Slightly larger gas tank than a Honda U2200. It's 1.18 gallons, and my plan is to do a long-term review of it over the next six to eight months. It might be more like eight to ten months because I probably won't be using it much this winter, and it's right now it's uh, late September. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox this. Pulsar makes two different versions of this. This is a gray one. It's model number G2319N. They also make a white version, and it has a different model number, but I don't remember what the model number of that is. I had also considered a Harbor Freight Predator 2000, but I opted to get this one because it's a little bit higher rated output. Uh, 1800 watt continuous, where the Predator 2000 is uh, 1600 watt continuous output. If a small portable generator was going to be my only generator, I would probably opt for the EU2200, probably two of them. But I already have a big generator. It's a Honda EU6500. I use that when I go places where I expect to need to use the air conditioner. Um, if I didn't have that generator, then I would definitely probably go for two EU2200s. I originally had two EU2000s, and I alternated those so that I kept the hours fairly equal. And if I was camping during the summer, then I would take both of them and parallel them together to run the air conditioning. But camping in Washington, it was actually pretty rare that I needed to use the air conditioner. So nine times out of 10, I only took one of them. When I go camping with uh, my primary RV, which is a truck camper, I always take my motorcycle with me and I haul that in a big enclosed cargo trailer. So having a big monster generator the size of the EU6500, it's not really an issue at all because I just wheel it into the back of the trailer and leave it there. Now we open up the top of the box, instruction manual, warranty info, here's a small bottle of oil, a little tool kit, maybe, maybe some cables in here, a spark plug wrench, that's what was rattling around, and we have an oil change funnel, let's see what's in this bag. This is a cable of some sort, a battery charging cable. So you'd plug this into the 12 volt outlet on the generator and then hook this up to a, like a car battery or whatnot. The unique thing about this generator is it does have a 12 volt cigarette lighter style plug. And also it has direct USB charging ports on the front. Access door on one side. Here's the spark plug. And on the other side is our starter pole. Gas cap surround has a little rubberized piece here, very similar to the Honda generators. vent on the cap and let's take a look at the front panel low oil indicator light overload light output light here's our 12 volt outlet ego mode little rubber cover over that switch usb charging 1.5 amp ground connection here's two little rubberized covers that cover up our uh, parallel ports DC 8 amp circuit breaker, AC 15 amp circuit breaker, duplex outlet, and here's our control switch off, run, choke. I've loosened the screws in the cover. These are actually captive screws, and I pulled off the spark plug access port, and then I reached in behind there and kind of pushed on this to release it. 
it's held in place with uh, a couple of little clips here that slide into slots. So here's our oil fill. It does not come with oil in it, I believe. I do see a little bit on the bottom of that dipstick, but I'll need to check that. A lot of people have recommended to buy, with any portable generator, buy the little magnetic dipstick. So it's a, a cap that has dipstick on it and then embedded in the end of the dipstick is a little magnet. On the back side of this cover it has some foam sound deadening material. The inverter section, it's not enclosed like it is on the Honda. This is a open circuitry in here. Zoom in and you can see a little bit better. And here's the air filter. Take that cover off and Fairly similar to a Honda filter or any other small portable generator, a little foam. Taking a look inside the generator, here's the carburetor and here's a drain screw for the carburetor. A little nipple on the bottom and a small piece of tubing. Here's the other end, it actually was just resting inside of there. so after you use the generator and want to put it in storage for an extended period of time it's a good idea to drain the carburetor float bowl and to do that just to pull this little hose out so the gas drains outside of the case of the generator and another thing I noticed inside is that little red spot right back there Right here, that is a small fuel filter, a little inline fuel filter between the carburetor and the fuel shutoff valve. Very similar to a small inline fuel filter that on-road, off-road motorcycles use. When it comes time to change the oil in your generator, here's a trick that I've used for quite a few years on my Honda generators is take a small piece of aluminum foil and Tuck it right in here at the dipstick and uh, drain spout. Just sort of tuck it in here so it stays in place. And then when you remove the dipstick, fill oh, cap, and drain the oil out, it doesn't make a mess all over the inside of the generator case. And just tip it like this over over your drain pan. The generator comes with a little bottle of oil. It's 11.8 ounces and that's what the capacity of the generator is so it's got a little sight window here in the side so what I'm gonna do is put a nice little mark there and save that bottle for future oil changes I filled the generator with oil and then ran it for about an hour and then I changed the oil in the next upcoming video I will be showing you how I install an hour meter on this generator so be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and also the bell icon for notifications when I get other videos uploaded on this generator.